Good afternoon and welcome to Georgia. I am currently hanging out in Hoggett's own little playground uh, called Georgia at War, a very good PvE scenario that you really should try out. It is a fantastic way of experimenting with new features, learn to fly one of your new aircraft in combat, or just, you know, have a good time. But in the latest patch, a new feature was added to the AJS-37 Vigan, and I thought we should have a look at it. Before we do anything else, we will arm our aircraft, we will add the RB-24J on the outer pylons, we will have a countermeasures pod and a jamming pod on those pylons. The inboard pylons will carry the BK-90. Uh, we will ca actually carry one of each, or rather, I think actually we'll take two of the Mixed Bags BK-90. The Mixed Bag BK-90s are basically all target modules and can engage a variety of targets. And then we'll use the fuel tank as well. So, we're gonna load this ordnance onto our plane. Request rearming. While this is done, uh, we will open our kneeboard, we will sh sh uh, basically just pass through all these pages until we reach this page. As you can see, the data coverage uh, can be found here. And the new feature that has been added is that a number of pre-programmed or auto-generated uh, coverages are added into the game. So, what we use our new bind to... You, probably have to bind this for yourself, by the way, so I don't think there is a bind press. Rearming complete. Uh, so you move through the cartridges, and you here see that the data cartridge selected 19 auto-generated. And here are all the targets that we can engage. You also have the target location, departure time, time on target, ingress direction, egress direction, and target movement. Now, it is important to notice that uh, if you're using stuff like the BK-90, uh, the fact that the target moves is important. Because if the target does not move, then you could just use the waypoints as they are. But we're also going to set, uh, set our QFE for the target area, and that is 1005. And lastly, we are going to close, uh, insert the uh, cartridge and close down the knee pad. And right when that is done, we can start with the startup of the airplane. As we approach the runway, there are still a few items left to do on our checklist before takeoff. Uh, the first thing will be to switch the entire thing into Ref Lola. Insert 9099 LSQ. This will load the data from the cartridge and then we'll switch our <coughs> HUD into navigation mode. So we will be making sure to slowly taxi onto the runway. Make sure to align properly and switch the switch back to output mode. And then we are clear for stage 3 afterburner and can commence the takeoff itself. Uh, lifting off from the ground here and as you can see down here on our data screen a yellow square will show us where we need to start flying and uh, since we're just gonna stay on low altitude we can actually make sure that uh, we kill the afternoon early and just go here now, you can also track the remaining waypoints and distance to the next waypoint here. It is important to notice that the auto-generated waypoint system does not give you 
a straight path to the target. You will pass several waypoints until you reach your target waypoint, meaning that it's not as straightforward as just giving you a straight line to the target you have selected. I find this to be a good thing since it accurately re uh, accurately feels like the experience you would have actually flying a planned mission rather than just going a straight line from airfield to target. Now if you program your targets yourself, it is a high probability that it's going to be that kind of straight line, but uh, Heathblur has very wisely avoided that in this scenario. So we will be... Actually, it looks like we are <coughs> a wee bit slow here, so we might actually go a little bit more with the afterburner, and right now our next waypoint is about 35 kilometers away. We are just passing waypoint 1, the city of Krimsk, and are currently on course for waypoint 2. From waypoint 2, we will be turning on to the target waypoint, waypoint 3. So we need to veer on to the target. And the target is currently about 15 kilometers away. So we need to make sure that we actually have a bead on it. It should be right above the next hill. And then, of course, we need to make sure our weapons are armed. Now, since we are engaging a SAM site, it also means that we should engage our countermeasures. And it also looks like there might be an enemy aircraft nearby. Uh, more to the point to our left. So, oh, I haven't actually activated my ejector seat. I might actually want to do that because not doing it could actually prove pretty costly. So we are coming over this hill, we are still bur pumping our countermeasures as much as we can. And once we have a somewhat visual on the target, we will be deploying the BKs. We are actually fairly close now, so let's just deploy them now and get the hell out. Someone is shooting at us, so we are going to lock on to our BKs and see how they're doing. Basically, something is shooting at our BKs right now. Lots of stuff is shooting at our BKs. Now, if we look at exactly what happened, you can see here that we indeed had aircraft to our left. And that there were actually three of them, a J-11 and two F-5s. And here we are inbound on target, starting our deployment of the countermeasures. And with the target right beyond the hill. However, we did not need to worry that much about the enemy aircraft because there was a friendly SAM site currently engaging the aircraft that were heading towards us. So we will be watching the final approach here and see exactly what we've got for our ordnance. Now, as you can see, we actually missed a very large enemy formation and instead went for the smaller SAM site uh, to our left. And the weapons release was not optimal. As you can see, we deployed two weapons that are now turning towards the target. And we also have a J-11 on us. One of the BKs got shot down on a route to target. And the second one was heavily fired upon by the enemy forces. And the BK-90 then detonates on top of the target. We'll see exactly what kind of damage it did. We actually scored most of the enemy 
uh, with uh, at least four vehicles and an SA-18 being destroyed and the rest of them actually dispersing to prevent a similar hit. Overall, I would say it was a decent attack. Maybe not the best one, but uh, considering we only got one of our dispensers away before the second was shot down, I can't really say that I am disappointed in it. Either way, this is this has been a rather nice demonstration of the automated system for the Vigan and its waypoints. It is entirely possible to use this system to get on target and it's only really the BK-90 that is going to be this fussy about uh, actually having the waypoint where it is. Every single other weapon is released in a different manner, meaning that you will be in a better position to control it. Like, if I was to go in with iron bombs, I wouldn't have to rely on the BK-90 going towards uh, this cluster. I would just fly over it and drop the bombs on the target myself. Same with the RB-05 and the RB-75. Those would be guided in onto the target from a distance, but it would be more output. But at any rate, using the automated system alongside the uh, BK-90 is completely viable, and I'm pretty happy for it, but I'm also happy to see that one of my BK-90s got engaged and shot down, because it mean also means that this isn't a foolproof system by any means necessary. It's actually a system where it is entirely possible that both of your warheads are going to be destroyed. And that has been everything from me. I hope you have a nice day. Catch you next time.